early 2011 update to the Net and Fancy EDC system, everyday carry system. Hi guys, thanks for watching the video for all the support making TMP a fun place to hang out, perhaps informative for us gearheads, especially knives, guns, flashlights, backpack and stuff. Got so many more reviews to go and I've done a few actually at this point as of 2011 and I'm going to give kind of an update to my EDC system in this video. Uh, it's probably going to run long because there's a lot to talk about, a lot of new items, not a lot, a few new items I'd like to show you that I have not broken out into their own tabletop reviews. I'm just going to kind of get, do mini reviews here. Uh, so not really a pants review. These are the outstanding previously reviewed 511 Tack Light Pro Pants. And that kind of leads me to a point I need to make, one of them. And that is I'm not going to annotate as I go through the video uh, where you can find the video, uh, the reviews that I've done. Pretty much most things I'm going to roll in front of the camera I've reviewed already. If you want to find that review, please go to the YouTube search line. Heck, you can do it in Google even. Um, for instance, here is the Prion 2 by 47. So I would type Prion 2, Net and Fancy, and voila, the review will pop up. Okay, that'll save me a lot of time in post production with that. Uh, another thing is, is, you guys may be surprised at how consistent this system is to the one I think I showed you about two years ago with my initial EDC system vid. A lot of similarities because even at that point I, I kind of had developed a system and I just know what works for me personally and what I like. Um, you're going to see some redundancy in the gear. I think that's an interesting as aspect to your system. I don't really uh, care if it's an EDC system like this one, maybe it's a backpacking system, a tactical system. For the really important items, things that I really want to have those capabilities with me at all times, I will have some redundancy. We'll talk about that. That rolls into a little bit of philosophy. Uh, I'm going to also start small. That is going to start out with the mundane stuff, stuff that I'll carry in my pants that I have with me. and ger They're generally going to be cargo variety like this. Work up to, yes, the fanny pack, deal with it. Um, and then I'll go weapons, going from non-lethal to lethal, what I generally will have with me. Um, this is assuming, of course, that I'm in an environment where it's legal to have everything that I'm going to show you and that I'm not traveling in, in such a manner that having, I don't know, the guns create such a huge hassle for me that I, I just leave it behind for legality reasons, okay? And you may differ from, you know, a lot of my gear choices. That's cool. There's a lot of differences here in TNP. Uh, guys get that. And I think that makes it interesting. We learn from each other and uh, you know there's really no established way of doing things. Uh, I'll throw my methodology out there. A lot of guys dig it. Some don't. They're still friends though. Okay. So if you differ, that's cool. Understood. Here we go. Starting off, since I already showed it to you, with lighting capability. Um, I will always have a flashlight on me. I've reviewed a lot of lights at this point. Some are bulky. You're looking at the style of light I like to have with me. EDC. We're, we're talking a pin light. And it, these days it's either going to be a stylus, uh, I'm sorry, a Streamlight Stylus Pro, which I still think is an excellent light. I'll roll a picture in right now. Love that light. It's single mode, adequately bright, very tough, very reliable. I've never had one fail on me ever. Uh, not to say it can't and won't happen. Or the amazing, still probably one of the best pin lights in the world, the 4.7's Preamp 2. Multi mode, pin light. There you go. Love it. So that's clipped to my pocket. Again, if you want details on anything I'm talking about, fish out the vid. And then, as you've seen so many times, saving the day uh, in the pocket, I have the Victorinox Cadet of one color or another. Okay, so you've seen this save the day. Look, again, I'm saying that too much. Uh, so many times. Has drivers on it, main blade, you know, a nail file on it. Pretty simple. If I don't have a cadet with me, then I'll have something similar, maybe a Spartan. Uh, I usually won't go much bigger than that. And I like the ALOX handles. I like the thinness of the cadet. Uh, as you see me go through this system, you're going to see there's a lot of stuff. So each item kind of needs to be small and compact as possible. Huh. Kind of harkening back to the things I harp on my, you know, my reviews. And that is the weight issue. It's because I'm not just carrying a cadet. I'm going to be carrying a lot of stuff, as you see. That rides in my left pocket, generally speaking. Uh, also, extra cartridge for the C2 Taser. Okay, I don't always have that with me. Sometimes I do. Some guys say, well, you won't be able to reload your C2. Um, options are good, right? I like options. You guys know that. My cell phone goes in this pocket. Again, this is why I love the Light Pro Pants. Yes, there's some other good ones out there. I'm going to review some. 
but the configuration of the 511 TacLite Pros after having used it for over a year and a half now I just really couldn't improve on them at all so my cell phone goes here I may upgrade, upgrade to an iPhone later this year sometime uh, when my contract allows it for you know more affordability oh you guys are gonna laugh but this is funny okay another reason I like it is because it gives me cargo and in this cargo pocket <laughs> brace yourself yes I carry nylon silverware all the time nothing fancy why do you carry that carry that that's ridiculous well this is one of those items guys is if you integrate it into your system and you're gonna have to have a way to do it you know that's comfortable carrying a pair of jeans and carrying all the gear that I'm showing you I just don't see how it's gonna work I've never seen anybody actually being more prepared than me I've never ran into anybody that had more stuff than me generally they're very under prepared as I've showed on camera throughout the years uh, and this is maybe one of those items why do I do this because one the cheesy plastic forks you get at wherever you go to eat they suck okay they're always snapping on you they're too small they're ridiculous and they pollute the environment yes I know yeah, I'm not a huge environmentalist but I'm a practical environmentalist I don't like throwing garbage in the environment from me personally if I can avoid it so yeah I carry these these I get from REI any outdoor store will have them campmore.com has them uh, this is GSI brand and I forget what brand this is they're just nylon and they're very durable they're very lightweight and you always have your eating utensils on you I know it's funny but I'm being dead serious with you guys if you have cargo pants they just tuck right in here and by the way that is the carry uh, I think scabbard to the Streamlight Stylus Pro that came with it I just use them for that okay and then I just jam these in here and it's so light you don't even know you have them on you and nor does anybody else so they're not goofy they're streamlined don't laugh you try it and you'll love it okay you guys want to know the system I'm telling you the system and by the way this is all genuine this isn't made up for the camera saying hey man what can I do to look cool and you know to impress the audience I never ever do that it's always genuine here in TMP you know take it or leave it okay going to the other side of the tack life pro pants I could just see the comments but it, you gotta try it you'll love it uh, for representation in the knife pocket on the right hand side I am right handed I'm running a Emerson CQC 8 okay generally I will have I'm kinda there we go I was underneath the tripod I will have a large tactical folder with me pretty much most of the time not all the time and along with that I'm gonna have a smaller utility blade yes two blades knife guys know exactly what I'm talking about okay and here we go with a Delica brown FFG love it I gotta tell you guys that sometimes I get in a rut in my system this is a fun video by the way in other words I get to where I just love the combination I'm carrying and I'll go like days with that combination you guys know what I'm talking about I know you do and I don't want to change it this would be a good example that I love the CQC8 I love that I can wave it from the pocket it's adequately light not super light had this one reprofiled by a friend of mine look at that nice uh, and then this one, I do beat this as a utility knife, the Delica FFG, super light, full flat ground. And I actually have to force myself to try other knives. And yes, I have lots of other knives to try. I always have knives that I'm testing in the EDC role in, in preparation for upcoming tabletop reviews. This is a good example. Let me show you some others though. I mean, once I break myself from, I don't know, CQC8, Rut, Delica combo, then you might see something else like this. Previously reviewed, of course, still outstanding. Cold Steel, new model, AK-47, with a nut and fancy JB Weld clip mod, still love it. And then along with that, I might pair a smaller utility knife, the Energy 1740. I think I got the model right on that. Yeah, 1740, love that, the Lee Williams flipper design. Um, like I say on my tabletop reviews, I don't, this is just me, I don't like a large util, I'm sorry, sorry, tactical blade for my utility tasks. This is the one I'm using mostly. Why do I carry this? Mostly defensive purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it ha happens if, you know, I whatever reason I separate from the gun, I always have a lethal capability with me. Okay, there I go. Just, you know, trying to keep it honest. So that's a good combo. Let me sh roll another one on here. How about, uh, and I don't mean to be on a cold steel bandwagon, but so much knife for the money, it's hard to, you know, not talk about them. There's a new model recon one. Did I review that one? I think I did. Uh, that's a great knife. And then I might pair that with the ever popular and beloved 
SOG Flash 1. First knife I ever reviewed. Okay, that's a great combo. What I'm doing here is this is a bigger knife, bigger bulk, maybe a little bit extra weight, and so I'm going to go with perhaps a smaller, even more compact utility blade to try to offset it. And again, the SOG Flash 1 in this situation would be the knife I use for most tasks opening, you know, packages, food preparation, killing gerbils. I made that last part up. I would never kill a gerbil. They're awesome, right? I'm um, just seeing if you're listening. And let me see. Oh, here's another one. How about the outstanding Police G10 Spider Co? That's a big blade. Oh, that is a bad mamma jamma. Yeah, previous review. Type it out there in the search line. You'll find it. And then the Vantage Select Small by Buck. Great combination. Rides low in the pocket. And look how thin that G10 Police model is. Big old flat ground blade, VG10. A great blade. I got to be careful that I don't go down these another review path with any blade I'm showing you. But this gives you the kind of a feel of the rotation that I'll do with my blades. And then I'll probably rotate them in a good week and then I'll rotate it in a different combination. And it's not always that way. I mean it may be daily. It just depends how I'm feeling. Uh, what I probably don't do is rotate in something really eclectic and more expensive and put a lot of wear and tear on it. Witness Microtech Amphibia Manual. Previously reviewed. Awesome blade. Great blade. Uh, except I have so many worker knives and that's what I'm talking about is these are kind of worker knives that I don't mind thumping on putting some wear and tear on that you know why thump on the more expensive ones that are harder to replace maybe the UMS in that fantastic blue coloration this one is circa 2004 as you can see on the blade stamp okay so I don't, I don't really rotate those those are collectibles for me so I'll fondle them play with them rarely rotate them in. I'll have to tell you this though, that amphibium you see in front of you, I have carried that and it does have some wear and tear on it just because I couldn't resist. It's just a sick knife. Very lightweight too. Really nice blade shape. Microtech amphibian. Love it. There you go. So there's some blades uh, and then I'll usually carry that utility blade down here. Some guys will say, well I'll carry my, my big knife right here. That fancy why don't you clip your, here we go with the Recon 1. Why don't you carry, I don't know, your utility blade right here at the reinforced edge of the pocket. Okay? The reason I don't do that is because then you create an interference. Okay, so I just find that these two knives just create an interference. Then they say, well, run it in the back pocket. Do that. Um, yeah, you can do that, and I have done it. We'll do it in the future. The problem is, is then, then when you're sitting down in the car or rubbing against stuff, I just find that I, the pocket clip can abrade, I don't know stuff. I've scratched cars that way. If I bring it down low, even though it's not the fastest, most convenient to access, it's out of the way, yet it's always there. And more importantly, it's covered by this flap and it won't get lost. Some pocket clips, like I've said in my review, I don't know, have that problem. Lot, and that's about as much as I load my pockets up here. Okay, keep in mind I'm running a fanny pack. Yeah, deal with it. Um, and if you don't have a fanny pack, you're going to be loading up your BDUs a lot more. And I don't like that. I think it's a bad system. Personally, sorry if you disagree. Because then, I mean, as it is, I got enough steel, as I've just shown you, in my 511 Tack Light Pros or whatever cargo pants you're running. And then it just becomes bulky. You got big pockets bulging out with stuff. You're smacking into stuff. And I definitely don't want to weight down this area here. So, you know, I put the, you know, the Lexan silverware on the other side and this. And that's it. Because this is lower on your leg. And if you put weight here, yeah, you're just going to create um, a movement problem with you because you have a long moment arm, you have some mass down there that has to be, I don't want to get scientific on you, it's just a pain in the butt. The same reason I don't like running drop down holsters really deep down on the thigh because it makes you run slower because you've got to get that weight in movement before you accelerate in your run. You with me? Alright, here we go. There's your 511 Tack Light Pro Pants, and yeah, I generally wear those. There's some other ones like the True Spec 24 7s, excellent pants. Go into the fanny pack. Oh, yeah. Nothing fancy. Golly, the fanny pack, please. I mean, I just can't do a fanny pack. Uh, you know how many times I've had that conversation, please? It's so played, I don't even want to go over it again. Um, guys in my military unit, you know, oh, I can't believe, you know, I can't do a fanny pack. And these are the. You know what's funny is they're the very same ones that are completely unprepared in life. What am I talking about? Well, let's dig in the fanny pack. I'll show you. And a lot of this will be redundant from what I did previously, right, in my EDC system because it's a consistent system and if it's working for me, I don't change it. 
First off, these days and for the last several years, I've been using Mountain Smith 5.2s. Very trim fanny pack. You know, a lot of times when guys say fanny pack, they think of this big, goofy, touristy type fanny pack that's sticking way out. When you cinch this Vibe tube down, even loaded the way I have it loaded with all my stuff, again, this is not made up, it's not done just for the camera, most guys don't even know, most people don't even know you have it on if you have the shirt untucked. It just blends well. Now, if you're a big fella, you know, you got a big gut sticking out there, been there myself, sorry, have, um, then it's different, okay? You, it may not be a system that works for you, okay? You'll have to maybe load the pants up, maybe have some something else. There's other ways of carrying stuff. Good ways, actually, but this is, I just, I don't know, I'm in a rut that it just works so well. I just use it. Outside pocket of the Vibe 2. Stuff I've shown you before. <laughs> this is like embarrassing because there's hygiene items. There's a comb in there. I've got dental floss. <laughs> My chapstick. It's so stupid. And then a pen. Always have a pen with you. Always, always, always have a pen with you. And that's about it on that exterior pocket. Gets interesting on the inside because that's where all the goodies are. Uh, first off, Neosporin. I always have Neosporin with me. And I actually tape it with Gorilla Tape just like that. Why? I don't know if I mentioned this in my first EDC system video. If you don't, the tube was going to bust and squirt all over the place. If you tape it just like I showed you here with Gorilla Tape, it won't explode on you and you'll have it. Now, usually it will empty the tube or use the tube halfway before I integrate it here. Otherwise, it's real fat and it just makes the fanny pack bigger. I hope this is not boring you guys. It's kind of embarrassing, but whatever. Uh, here we go. Uh, there's some other stuff in my wallet. I'm not going to open that up and have the whole world see. Sorry. Um, but the stuff that's interesting for EDC purposes, I have prepped already at the top and I'll just pull them out. Um, I have some, this is aviation tape and I forget exactly what type it is. It's like fabric tape. It's outstanding. And I'll usually have about three hanks of this cut out. Look how flat it is. Uh, I think it's called Polican. It's an aviation FAA approved tape and it just sticks like crazy. And it's, it comes, uh, as you can see, with adhesive backing on it, so it's better than duct tape, really. And that's what I carry in my wallet. Size and weight constraint, baby. That's what I'm saying. Uh, several band-aids. Here's another Polican section. I can't tell you how many times I've saved the day with this tape. Does anybody got any tape on them? <clears throat> I open up the fanny pack. They stop laughing when I start saving the day out of the stuff that I have with me. And then some alcohol swabs for disinfecting cuts. Yeah, it burns, but... Uh, I'll tell you, there's been several times that's, that's saved the date. Not just for that, and I think I've mentioned in my level one, level two first aid videos, the alcohol swabs are good for removing all kinds of crap. You know, you know, residue, sap, stuff like that. I always have uh, about five or six on me in the wallet. Okay, enough of that. Change purse. This one I bought in Turkey in the Air Force. Uh, really nice. Uh, why do I need that? I just don't, if you don't, if you just throw it in there, throw it in your pocket, it's just banging around it's just not good especially if I don't know if you just might have to be stealthy okay um whatever and then the back pocket I don't put anything in back here I like keeping it flat but the real meat and potatoes of the fanny pack are in here Almar Eagle Aus 8 full flat ground always in the fanny pack pretty much always I wouldn't say always always but pretty much always this is a super lightweight tactical blade is it the strongest one out there nope Sure is an amazing knife though. Well designed knife. Super light and look how flat and thin it is and yet the blade length. Two ounce tactical folder. Man, love that knife. It's always here. So even if I, the concept, again we're getting into philosophy here. The concept is, let's say I don't grab everything else but I do grab the fanny pack. I, I'm pretty much set with that. I, here's, here's my blade, right? Remember the redundancy element I was talking about? That's, that's where we're going with this. Okay, and then my multi-tool. Oh, yeah, MDMT. Medium duty multi-tool, the ever-beloved S2 Juice by Leatherman. Does it get much better at this form factor? Uh, not really. I haven't seen one yet that beats it. And I have them in gray and oranges. I just keep thrashing this one. And again, here comes redundancy. That one's got a utility knife in it. So there's my tactical blade. Here's my utility knife. Okay, and then it has all the other stuff I talked about in the review. The drivers, you know, the pliers, the wire cutters, can opener, excellent scissors in it. Uh, it saves the day again. Love it. Does anyone have some really good scissors on them? Yeah, I do. There you go. It's so fun saving the day. 
Okay, going on. Here, uh, my flashlight these days that I'm carrying, and this has changed from last time I showed you, is actually the PFI Pink. Prion One. Multi-mode flashlight. Love that color. It's not really pink, it's kind of a rose color, right? I think he might have a couple of these available. I'll throw the annotation up. Maybe, I, I, I haven't talked to him about it. Great light though, look how small that light is. And it really has a good area lighting capability. Redundancy, remember I had that Prion 2 in my pocket, here's the redundant Prion 1. Redundant, why? Nothing fancy. Well, one could fail, things just fail. I don't care how good they are, they fail. And more importantly, you may not have that other one. It may have gotten lost. For whatever reason, you forgot to put it in your pocket. And this redundancy has saved it. Saved me personally several times. Uh, Victorinox money clip knife. I really love these scissors on this for Victorinox. They're so precise. Those, I mean, it's just great. Uh, great first aid scissors, like when you have to chop some skin off in a very precise fashion. The money clips are excellent. And yeah, here we go. More redundancy. Little pin blade right there. Way to do your nails right there if you want to do that. I don't know. And then the money clip. Okay, so what do you know about three blades in there? Uh, do I show it to you right now? Not quite yet. I'm going to show you something kind of surprising. Uh, <laughs> I have a nail file in there. Again, it's embarrassing. It's just like, you know, hygiene stuff. Uh, did I show you these last time? Tweezers. These are lacrosse. I bought them at Walmart. What, all of $2.50? And they have a little carry case. Flat edged. Uh, they're not just for pulling splinters out and stuff. Sometimes you need a really precise way to grab something and the twe tweezers come in handy. Guys who carry them know exactly what I'm talking about. Lacrosse tweezers, they come with. And then lens cleaner. I just started integrating that about a couple months ago. Uh, I got this for such, it's so compact. And generally what I use that for, not just sunglasses, but camera stuff in TMP. Because the lenses are always getting dirty. It's nice to have that and not have to go back to the truck. Earplugs. A lot of noisy environments and you know I protect my ears you know piloting thing you kind of have to have good, good hearing to have that then I have a key to the post office box and then what's in here oh yeah whistle my rape whistle <laughs> I just saw a movie where they called it a rape whistle the other guys god that was funny uh, anyways yeah I always have whistle on my person uh, Singling purposes, stuff we've talked about before, right? And I think USK video, I talked about that. Urban Survival Kit. Maybe I will annotate that one. I'll do one annotation. Okay, here's something you guys have not seen. I'm pretty stoked about it, actually, and I've integrated it into my fanny pack for the last few months. Min miniature Titanium Pry Bar. Check that out. Made by Blade Forms Dude STR. Very, very cool. You guys know I'm big on size and weight constraints. Anything I can find that will integrate into my personal system, just like you're seeing, that serves a purpose that I have not had with my other tools, I'm interested in. When I looked at this and I, I started checking out and researching it, personally I was like, that is something I could use. Because it prevents you from having to really thrash your other stuff. In other words, using other tools that aren't really suited for prying tasks, which, which we've all done in the past. Maybe the main blade of your knife Okay, what well, would be a good representation? I don't know. Flash one, maybe not the best. Miniature titanium pry bar. It's made out of a .090 inch thick knife grade titanium. Make sure I get the designation right. 6AL-4 Victor is what STR is using for them. This is the basic model. Comes in various colors. I will throw up a, uh, some information on the screen there if you're interested in it. I think it's perfectly designed. Wrapped in paracord has a semi uh, bent in, just like you would see on the miniature pry bar like I covered in the USK video. You guys remember that and how important it is to have in your kit. This is not going to be as strong, I'm not saying it is, but it is a pry bar and it's going to be strong for its size and weight. And there's a flat blade driver right there. How many times have you wanted a really flat driver and your multi-tool doesn't have it unless you're going with a heavy duty multi-tool, HDMT, yeah, those will have it sometimes, um, but others don't. And you, you might make do with your Cadet because that has a pretty good driver on it. Uh, I've used this a couple times, not tons yet, but having carried it, it gives me a peace of mind having it on board. Yes, the fanny pack. That is so cool. Minium, uh, sorry, uh, miniature titanium pry bar. 
This one is in brown, and then here comes another one in blue. Isn't that beautiful? That's a cool color. And I like the paracord wrapping, makes it more comfortable. You could pry bucket lids off with this, pry out staples, open boxes. And STR makes a point in his uh, thread on it that in some locations where knives are illegal, even in Europe, this won't be. Right? And yet it gives a lot of the same functionality as a knife blade. And it definitely is not intimidating. God, it's just so cool. And it just is so lightweight. Carries so nicely. Uh, well done, STR. Um, so price information there, I'll put up there on the screen. There you have it. That's the fanny pack working our way up. Now we get into the weapons. We just kind of covered the tool set there. The Taser C2. Non-lethal. Wait. Less lethal um, device to handle bad guys, right? I'm not going to go into any of the details on the Taser C2. I already gave a very thorough review on the system. I carry it daily, whenever I can legally. I think it just uh, is a superior system to most other non-lethal slash le less lethal alternatives. Okay, and then like you saw in the pants, sometimes, not always, I'll carry a spare cartridge. Uh, love it. I mean, carrying it personally. You guys run into me at SHOT Show or wherever, you're going to see that I have a C2 on me. It's just the way it rocks. And then, as you can see, uh, layering up. This is a non-lethal option. Then I almost always have a lethal option on me. And mostly what I carry is what you're seeing right here. Galco Classic Light Suede Holster, also previously reviewed here in the Nut and Fancy Project, kel PF9. Rockin' Extra Magazine Offside, 115 grain, standard pressure CCI jacketed hollow point. Nice big open in there. Very important to me, by the way. I don't like a little tiny hollow point. I want something that's really going to mushroom, create maximum wound damage. Within reason. Some guys will say, well, why do you use 115 grain? Why don't you go with 124 grain plus peas? Um, several reasons. Remember, what you're looking at is that the end result of carrying as in a civilian capacity for many years over two decades and this is just what I I like I, I can shoot really good with a 115 standard pressure especially in a very small handgun like the PF9 right and I think it just works well uh, I think when it comes down to caliber let me not say caliber choice I'm gonna say uh, low choice that's a better word um, I kinda side on the equation of you need to hit what you're shooting at first that's job one if you can't do that it doesn't matter what load you're carrying. So if you're going with 124 grain gold dot plus peas, which I think are great rounds, probably one of the best all-rounders all for a 9mm, um, shoot it well. And if you can connect well with it, rock on. The main reason I go with this is because, here we go again, nothing fancy with the weight issue, that yes, I like aluminum cased ammo. But nothing fancy, it's just a, you know, it's just one or two ounces difference if you go with, you know, brass case versus aluminum case. Yeah, uh, I know that. But remember, I've, I've carried lots of guns over the years. You've seen it in the tabletops as I've discussed this philosophy. And the way I, I, I err is to the rule one of a gunfight, and that is to have a gun. You know, Rule one is having a gun. And to have a gun, it's got to be comfortable, it's got to be slim, it's got to be lightweight. And it's got to be able to integrate into your daily system, your daily activities in such a manner that is not... Um, distracting to you, that it's not uncomfortable for you. Because I will tell you, as I've told you before on camera, that if it's uncomfortable, you're going to stop carrying it. And when that next Virginia Tech kicks off, the next Tucson kicks off, you're going to reach for your gun and you don't freaking have it. Okay, so rule one is to have a gun that's comfortable. The PF9 set standards that I still have not seen any other manufacturer meet. You know, the new SIG. What was that, the 290 come out? Dude, too heavy. Too thick. Look how thin the PF9 is. Okay, if there's something better out there, don't you think I'd be carrying it? I'm just saying, you know? Uh, I don't always carry PF9. I'm just saying a lot of the days I'm rocking a PF9 with the load you're seeing right here, and I, I feel adequately armed with it. Remember, you're making a balance. You're making a compromise as a concealed carry permit holder. And I'm talking to my civilians. If you're an officer and you're running a ba this as a backup, that's kind of a different POU. Mm. I'm talking it as a primary handgun of choice to defend your life.
you're making a compromise. A handgun in and, in and of itself is a compromise, isn't it? If I can't speak, isn't it? I mean, we'd be rocking a rifle if we knew troubles at hand. Better yet, we wouldn't even be there. Okay, unless we're trying to save lives. So it's a compromise, and I'm pretty happy with it. When I walk out the door, I don't feel like, oh crap, I only have a 9mm. Well, make your shots count. Make, you know, put them where they need to be. Probably, not always, it'll get the job done. You know, every handgun round out there has failed, guys. Every handgun round has failed. So, you know, critics of the 9mm, understood. You might want to go with a 40. You might feel better, sleep better at night knowing that you're packing a 40. Maybe even a 45. I, you know, I have no issues with it. I love all those cartridges. They're great. But in terms of size and weight efficiency, just like Rob Leithan discussed in Shot 2010 when we had that booth review, uh, I'm, I'm totally agreeing with that. It's, it's hard to beat the 9mm. It just is. Oh, and here's another factor. You need to practice with your gun to be good at it. And 9mm is so much more cheaper than the other rounds. You know, are you going to go out with your 45 and practice every month? I'll tell you statistically, you won't. Most guys don't. In fact, they're lucky if they shoot twice a year. Most civilian concealed carry permit holders. I know, because I, I know a lot of them. That's just how it rolls. I also might, if you know, if I'm wearing like a t-shirt or something, and I don't want this printing. By the way, this is this conceals really nicely under the most of the shirts that you see me wearing. And that's why I wear those shirts, so I can conceal it. And it throws on so easily. It drapes nice. No, you don't have to lock it down in your belt. It's a stable system, and it's fast for the draw. Yes, you're going underneath uh, the shirt. That's a little bit of a training issue. Maybe go through the buttons, do the Superman carry, rip out, whatever. Love it though. Love the horizontal orientation. And this is kind of why I talked about, you know, the chest mount of pistol. You know, I run the pistol on the chest. Guys are like, well, I can't believe you do that. You know, you're pointing the gun at other people. Why well, aren't you doing it with a holder, shoulder holster too? So it's draped around your shoulder. You know, as you walk around, that gun's always pointing at somebody. Huh. It ain't going to go off by itself. It needs a human finger. Also, will rock the car PM9 still in the Nut and Fancy Project. Yep, still like the gun. Uh, and then in this situation, I'm rocking a. I want to say it's a. No, oh, it's a bodyguard belly band. There's all kinds of belly bands out there, so I wouldn't get too wrapped around the axle about it. I think I talked about this in my review years ago, too. Um, by the way, I sewed the white Velcro here. I will never use a, bo a, a belly band without a retention because it will come out. If you run, you get in a fight, you go to the ground, you don't want to go lethal, right? The gun's going to come out. You want to retain it, so I sewed up these retention Velcro things, put the snap on there, and then I did the Velcro shoulder snap. Offside magazine as well. Same load as before, 115 grain CCI, aluminum case blazer. Hey, aluminum case suck. No, they don't. I shoot thousands of those all the time and all the handguns. I've never had a problem with in any quality handgun, let me say that. There have been some problems with guns that had problems, all it wasn't ammo related. Okay, so that's uh, the car PM9. Man, that carries so flat though. Nice gun. Uh, the only thing I have about cars that I have an issue with is they're just so freaking expensive. Hate that. Way expensive. I mean, what, you could buy two of these for one of those. You know? Some guys say, well, the Keltec PF9, man, that's having problems. You know, I can't, I don't have a crystal ball, guys. All I know is what I've seen from myself, and my PF9s have ran well. They have. They've been good guns. Will they bust in the future? I don't know. From what I've seen so far, good gun. Honestly, how many times are you going to shoot this gun? How many rounds are you going to send through it in your lifetime? You'll be lucky. Lucky if you send 1,000 downrange. Typical CCW holder won't send 500. If your gun can't handle 500 rounds in its lifetime, something's wrong. You need to look for a new gun. But this is kind of the standard when I look at a concealed carry gun. These two guns, are they this thin? Are they this light? 12.7 ounces unloaded, the PF9 by kel 12.7 ounces? Yes, it's snappy and recoil. It has a long double action trigger. If you learn how to stage that, you can shoot it accurately. I've shown that on camera. We'll show it a lot more. I practice with it every month. Uh, I can shoot good with the PF9 at this point. So can you if you practice with it. Same with the car PM9. Um, they're thin, they're lightweight, they're reliable, they're accurate if you do your part. Great guns. So anytime a new gun comes out, I'm like, will it beat what I'm carrying already? The answer is no. Guess what? I'm not changing. And I haven't changed. Hmm. 
Here you go. That's oh yeah. Let me address this. Guys will say, well, do you ever carry something other than those two handguns? Um, we're talking rule of law carry here, and I think that's what I named. God, this camera has such a wide field of view. I gotta puff this clear off the table. Uh, rule of law carry means. You know, society's working. Everything's going well. Those are the types of guns I'd carry with me. If we go into WROL without rule of law, I'm up gunning. Okay, I might carry a holster on the on my strong side, more ammo, full size gun, that type of stuff. I've discussed before. Another rule of law carry: if I just you know run out of the house or something, I don't want to put on the holster. Uh, then yeah, I, I may go with a 380. It is very seldom though, I gotta tell you that. It's very seldom I'll go with a 380 as my only gun. Um, do I ever carry a backup gun in rule of law civilian carry? That's a very important distinction. I'm not talking LE stuff. No, I don't. I go with one gun. Uh, if we go to WRL, I'll probably go two gun deep because the likelihood of me needing my gun is more serious and more likely. And in that case, I want to have more depth, more redundancy. There's that word again. You see how I'm thinking? Um, if my one gun goes down, same with a police officer. I, I'm talking to my police brethren out there. You know what I'm saying. You don't just go out there with one gun. You're going to have a Caltech 380. Maybe it's a Sig P238. Maybe it's a PPK. Uh, maybe it's a Snub Nose, a Smith and Wesson 638. Love that gun. A Centennial. That's smart, in my opinion. And you're willing to take the extra weight for the extra assurance of always being armed. But occasionally, as a civilian, I will go out in a civilian capacity with a 380. I, I, I gotta tell you though, I'm not really digging it. When I'm when the only gun I have on me, I don't care what it is, is a 380, I, I'm not digging it. I feel undergunned. Not just for rounds, but for the cartridge itself. Just me, okay? But there are times and places where it's appropriate. And yes, I always take an extra magazine with me. This one is in the rip-offs off, you know, it's like a knife carrier or something. And 90 grain Hydroshock. Load of choice for the 380. Make sure it's reliable on your gun. Whatever you're carrying, make sure it's relatively accurate. Yeah, they're expensive to shoot, though. I want to talk more about that in the future. Uh, everyday carry system update, early 2011. And then finally, I always have some rope on me. Paracord bracelet, wrist armor. There you go. Unravel it, need it. Haven't never had to do that. It's mostly a style thing. But if you have to, it's on your person. It's a lot of stuff. Then fancy, you're so big on weight. How much does all your fanny pack stuff weigh? You know what? Good question. I just weighed it tonight. 2.7 pounds with all the stuff in it with a taser 2.7 pounds uh, I've told you guys this in lots of reviews right that all weight adds up all the weight adds up and that's why I look at each individual item very critically and say is this something I need do I need the redundancy is it worth it you know is it worth packing along does it give me I don't know peace of mind and will it save the day if the answer is yes and I'm going to carry it all together I'm probably carrying I don't know five pounds of gear I'm just ballparking, but it's gear that's worthwhile. Oh, one thing I didn't talk about with the blades. I told you how I go with a large tactical blade and then a small utility knife. Sometimes I'll just go with a medium blade, nothing more, as my primary knife. Witness the Wilson Combat Combat ELC, also known as a Fox Gun Hammer. Great knife. And it's mid size, just like I said in my review, so it functions as a tactical blade if you really, really need it to. More likely a really good utility blade. Okay, there you go. EDC update by Nut and Fancy. Told you it'd be a long video. Fun video to do. I mean, one take, I got it. It's just, I know the system I work with every day, everyday carry system. What's your system? You know, talk about it in the comments and things uh, that work for you. There's other ways to carry besides my system. I totally realize that. But the thing is, is do you integrate it with high consist consistency and percentage that is so ingrained in your daily system that you don't go out of the house without it? If you are not doing that, then I want to submit to you that your system's kind of jacked up. You need to improve it. Uh, I can't tell you, you've seen it on camera, you're going to see a lot more on camera. Guys, I say, hey, do you have a multi-tool? Do you have a knife? The answer is no, no. Do you have a gun? No. Do you have a Taser C2? No. And these are tactical guys I'm talking to. These are guys that supposedly get it. These are not civilians off the street that, you know, sheep. These are guys that think like you and I do, and they don't have the, any of these items. Maybe they have this, and that's all. They don't have band-aids, they don't have tape, they don't have Neosporin, a freaking pry bar on them. And yeah, it's, it's just funny. It's funny to me uh, because I'm so prepared. And guys are going to laugh that I have all this stuff. But I do. If I meet you, wherever I meet you, you go ahead and do a check on me, and we'll see. 
We'll see if I have this stuff, and you'll be amazed that I indeed do. This is nothing fancy. This is early 2011. That's how my everyday carry system looks. Be prepared. Be ready to uh, save your own skin and actually to be a sheepdog and help other people out there. I'm, I'm all for that. Nothing's changed. See ya.